Disclaimer. I want to make this video short and sweet, but considering I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects when it comes to houseplants, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be quite long and hopefully sweet. Anyway, hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and here we talk all things houseplants with a bit more emphasis in Hoyas. Today's video is a bit more generic and it has to do with passive hydroponics or how it's more commonly known, semi-hydro. So, we're gonna go through the good, the bad and the ugly of semi-hydro for houseplants, apparently. Uh, semi-hydroponics or passive hydroponics as is the official name uh, is a term that I first came across uh, in vegetables. So I started seeing in supermarkets more and more veggies like lettuce, cucumbers and some others uh, growing in a hydroponic method. Uh, quite a few years back I saw the first um, plant parents using a similar method of passive hydro uh, for their houseplants. So I have started giving it a try a few years back and to be honest it's my go-to method of growing houseplants right now. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, technically semi-hydroponics is the method where you use mainly inorganic materials, inorganic uh, medium and water to grow your plants. Now the benefits of semi-hydroponics um, for houseplants in particular, there are quite a few with the most important for me at least is that um, semi-hydro does not allow you to over water your plants. I am a over waterer all the time so whenever I had previously plants growing the traditional way let's say I was tending to over water them because I wasn't sure if it's you know too much water and not so much water I was using a moist meter but still these are not a hundred percent accurate so I always had this problem with semi-hydro you just cannot do it. The plants take as much water as they want, no more, no less. Um, another huge benefit is the less chances or the lower risk, let's say, of fruit rot. Um, it's not that it's not happening, it can happen, it's still quite common, but given the fact that plants take as much water as they want and no more, it's more uncommon for a plant to rot uh, its roots when it is in semi-hydro. Another huge plus is the reduced risk of pests. Practically, um, when you are growing in semi-hydro, usually when we say semi-hydro we refer to inorganic uh, materials like pond, leca, etc. Uh, so, with this come the lower risk of pests. You do not keep the soil or your uh, material, your medium, moist for too long. So you avoid um, pests like fungus nuts and a few other, you know, that you really may have if you have lots of plants grown in soil. A better nutrient uptake is also a very, very, very big plus. So um, sometimes even soil can become uh, hydrophobic. That means that it will not uh, become wet thoroughly when you put some uh, vitamins or some nutrients for the plants. It's not easy to be absorbed, etc. etc. With semi hydro, you avoid this. You have much, much better intake whenever you decide that you want to feed your plants. Um, you don't also need to water that often because uh, when you use semi-hydro method technically the plants take as much water as they want so uh, you check when the water is really down or it is completely out of water the pot and then you just 
refill with water so uh, uh, from personal experience I have seen that uh, it's not that often as in other plants that grow the traditional way with soil that means it's also very good when you go for holidays for a few days uh, so you don't have to worry even if it's too hot if it's too hot the plants will absorb a little bit more water but you have the tank the reservoir or whatever you're using so it's easy for them to again take as much as they want that means and this is okay this is actually my biggest plus in semi-hydro is that it's super easy for others to water your plants when you are on holidays uh, for example for me I live in Hong Kong I am from Greece that said I have I have well I do want to as well I travel to Greece and um, usually once per year and this is for a long period of time so usually it's around three weeks within this three week period if especially if it's during summer you need to have somebody taking care of your plants uh, for me I found it much much easier because um, every person and again I talk from personal experience when you tell them that you know it just needs little water or it needs lots of water for every person's perspective or of how much is a little or how much is lots of it's completely different to another person so I have had plants previously dried up I have had plants previously completely drowned and rotted within these three weeks that I was away so I came back and you know it was always a surprise not always a good one uh, about what to expect since I started using uh, semi-hydro I have this problem solved so I have given specific instructions to the friends who come and water my plants so they know exactly what to watch and they it's not you know anymore a guessing game let's say so these are i would say the major benefits i really cannot find much negatives many negatives for a uh, semi-hydro and this is why it's my go-to method in general now uh, you often hear semi-hydro linked to self-watering pots I just want to clarify here that although semi-hydro is linked to inorganic uh, media as I said pond, leca, etc self-watering containers uh, can be used with both organic and inorganic medium we'll go through this a little bit later now uh, for semi-hydro there are two different setups let's say two different group of setups the first is the submerged method um, with either one or two pots I'll go through this and the second one which is my personal favorite I swear by it is the wick system also we will go through the pros and cons of each one so uh, for the submerged with one pot the media is like wh whatever you're using again like our pond are the most common for semi-hydro is usually submerged by one third or one fourth and this is what you use as the reservoir where you keep the water uh, okay let me actually have here a few of my plants so you can have a better understanding of how its system works so for example this is my new alocasia jacqueline my baby one who is started rooting quite nicely as you can see here and I have decided to use Leca for this one actually for Alocasias and for some of the monsters that I have I have seen that Leca works best at least for me again these are all based on my personal experience with uh, the mentioned plants so for this for example I have decided to go for the submerged method with just one pot so the vessel that I'm using is this vase I have filled with leca the plant as you can see is inside and I have a reservoir I'm not sure how visible it is on the camera let me try it which is filled up to here so this is practically one, one third close to one fourth of the um, total height of the vessel um, 
this method has a few advantages and a few disadvantages. One of the pros is that it can be cheaper or most cost efficient than a two pot setup because always one pot is cheaper than two pots. Um, also it is more aesthetically pleasing um, in a sense that you know you see something which is like this. So depending on the vessel that you choose to put your plant in uh, it can be better than you know pot in a pot and then it can be a bit messy elsewhere. The cons. <laughs> Actually one of the cons is also the pro. So it can also be more expensive than the two pots because when we do a two pot system this is usually plastic. If you want to do one pot system submerged and you want something which is a bit more aesthetically pleasing so unless you go for a plastic pot if you choose a glass container like this one for example this is a glass vase and in that case it can be much more expensive if it's glass instead of plastic and um, another huge disadvantage for me especially for leka because leka needs frequent flushing to remove all the mineral residues uh, da -da -da. Um, so another drawback for me is that it's not very easy to get flush with two pots is much easier again we'll go through these details one pot is not so easy so if i want to flush practically what i have to do is i take it in the sink or in the tube i just put my hand on top i empty all the water i put some fresh water i try to stir a little bit empty and then just fill with one third one fourth as normal another disadvantage is that you have less or to put it more correctly predefined space for the nutrients and the water so for example here in this vessel it is always as long as i use this vessel it has to be one fourth or one third the space that i use for my water if i want to put a larger container a larger pot underneath to hold more water because i will be for example away for longer and i don't have somebody to water my plant this is not possible so it is always that much that you can put if you want to put more you need to move the plant to a different container um, another thing is that the vessels when you're using a one pot method they have to be transparent because you need to check the roots as i showed you now for example the roots that have started forming and you always need to take a look on the water reservoir on how you know uh, the height of the water so in that aspect you always need transparent vessels where you have a very good uh, view of what's happening inside your pot this can be an advantage if you like this but uh, you are quite limited in the options that you can you know you can get so if this aesthetic doesn't match with your flat with your house then okay it can it, it can be a con um, and the last one of the cons for the one pot method the submerged is that you really need to up pot once roots grow so roots naturally when you're doing semi hydro grow towards the water I'll show you a few examples a bit later. Um, when you have all this filled up with roots, which you will eventually get uh, if the plant grows healthy, um, the only option is to take it out of the vessel, out of the container and repot to a bigger one. You cannot trim the roots as you can with some other systems and just you know keep the plant in the same container this is not an option when you're growing in one pot. Now for the two pots. Two pots submerged system is usually preferred for plants that like to stay more wet. Like uh, Monsteras can be a good example. Although 
Personally, I don't use the submerge with two pots, but I can give you an example. Um, I don't use it because my goat method is spawn actually. So, let's consider, let's say that this is my Hoya Linearis. Not in the best shape, but okay, this is what I have right now. So, what you could do, and this is just an example, you can have a pot or a net pot as the first uh, container. And then, as your reservoir, you have a second container, a second pot, without a wick, where you just put water up to here. So, the plant, again, takes up as much water as it wants, and this is actually one of the huge advantages of this method, is that it's much, much easier to flush, because if you want to flush, you just take it out of the second container. Again, consider that this is not, uh, this doesn't have a wick, that it is, you know, just a simple container full with water. Um, so you take it out, you take it in the sink, you flush it, you put it back in and you're gone. Um, another huge advantage is that you have a broader selection of pots with this method. So you can choose as your external pot, the one that keeps the water, something which is more, let's say, aesthetically pleasing to you or, you know, fits better your house. Um, apparently, okay, one of the disadvantages of this is that it's more expensive than uh, uh, just using one pot. Depending again what you're using, if it's plastic, plastic versus one glass, then the two plastic can be much cheaper than the one glass. But, okay, if let's say that both are plastic, two plastics are more expensive, usually double the price than one plastic. Um, again, I don't use this method, so I don't have much to say about it, because uh, if I'm going to use two pots, and I will show you in a while, it's gonna be with a wick. So let's move to the wick system. A wick system, oh, what can I tell you about wick setup? So, so many positives. Um, usually they are drier. So uh, what I mean is that um, the medium that you use doesn't stay too moist too long. So if you have plants that want to have a wet and dry cycle, like some Hoyas do, for example, again, disclaimer, I'm not doing this in any of my Hoyas. If I let them dry, this is completely by mistake. But anyway, let's say that you are following this method with some of um, your plants, then the wick setups are ideal. Uh, another thing is that uh, you can inspect the roots much easier rather than having just one, you know, submerged system. Um, what I mean by that, I have here my Merilia, let me show you. So for this one, which is, so it's a bit huge, and oh, okay, and they have all these long, long vines here. So for the Merilia, um, as you can see, I have it in a self-watering pot. So, um, although the inner vessel is not transparent, since it's semi-hydro, the roots tend to go down, downwards towards the water. So, I can just lift and they see the whole root system here, or you know, a big part of it. So, this is a very good indication, apparently here you can see, let me see if I can approach it. You can see that it has very, very healthy root system in general. So, in that aspect, it's so much easier to inspect the roots for mealybugs, for um, root rot as well, and also uh, it is a good indication of whether you need to move the plant to a bigger pot or not. The one I just show you no need. I mean, it has quite a big root system in the water, but okay, it is what it is. This is the way it works, and most probably if I'm going to uproot the whole plant, I would say that there are not many roots in the... I have this one in pond, so in the actual pond. Um, next one, I advantage that, I ha that you have with the wick system 
is that you do not need to change the container that often like if as I said in the submerged system if here you are full of roots then you need to upput with the wick system you don't need to do that um, actually you can just trim the roots if the plant is healthy and keep in the same vessel if you don't want to you know up pot make it a fuller plant or whatever um, I personally I have never um, trimmed roots because I'm currently growing all of my Hoyas and if they grow too much I just take some clippings I have never trimmed the roots especially for Hoyas at least not unless I had to uh, also, the wick system can work with both organic and inorganic materials. Um, organic materials like... Um, okay, let me show you. I have my ondulata here. I just made a short, I think a week ago, um, about an experiment that I did with my ondulata. I can link the description. So, my ondulata, both systems, I had two cuttings. So, both cuttings um, were grown, had grown roots in water and then when they were ready I decided to transfer one of the cuttings to pond again with a wick, you see here it has a wick inside, there is a reward container so a pond is inorganic and then for the next one I made a new mix which is organic again it has a wick as you can see here so it's in a self-watering pot with a wick but with organic material like coco chunks um, tree bark and a few other items um, so with the wick system it's much easier to use um, organic material organic medium if you're into that and you don't want to grow in uh, Ponoreleca or you're not familiar with them uh, now there are a few disadvantages which I have to tell first of all in general it is more expensive unless you DIY your uh, pots so this for example has two pots the inner is a net pot the outside is a container that you know of my choice um, the this one this is another example so this is my caudata so you see here oh by the way you see here i can also inspect the roots and um, this is a very standard pot uh, that it has the upper where you put all your medium and then on the bottom you have the wick and the water reservoir so these are in general more expensive uh, unless you DIY, if you di do your own pots, then apparently it can be um, much cheaper. For example, this one is one of my newest Hoyas on Hoides. Um, the, um, the root part, the, the stem where the roots were, was quite long, so I wanted something a bit longer than the pots that I had already in hand. I could not find anything from the you know, store bot, so I made a cottage cheese cup which I just made holes with my soldering iron inside a yogurt cup it works like a charm, I already have new growth I'm not sure if you can see it here so yeah uh, okay, if you do your own pot though uh, apparently you compromise on the aesthetics I mean I can always paint this black or whatever I want but still okay it's not you know like um, so pretty let's say as one that you would buy brand new from the store in the color of your choice etc etc um, another con and I have recently found this with some uh, quite root bound Hoyas that I had to transfer to a bigger pot is that the roots tend to grow inside the wick uh, which makes it hard if you want to transfer to a bigger pot so in that case you are 
this is why I said that I don't trim roots unless I have to. So in that case, you you sort of remove some healthy roots, which are tied to the wig. Um, some people I have seen that may transfer the whole thing with the wig. They just cut the wig, try to take it out along with the roots. But I, I'm not sure if this is the best option. Personally, I have never done it. Whenever I wanted to transfer a plant to a bigger pot, I was always removing the wig. Um, that said, you may also need to destroy, or no, actually it's not, it's actually destroy some store-bought pots. So, um, if you don't want to lose the root system, and what I, I did in the past for uh, my globulosa, for example, that I, I repotted um, very recently, what I did is that because I could not remove, it had a huge root ball, I did not want to cut all of the root ball because elsewhere okay, I could just keep it on the same vessel, I didn't have to change the container. Um, I sort of made huge holes with my soldering iron on the bottom of the pot so I could remove the roots easily, the root ball easily. Um, I did not completely destroy the pot, but now I can only use it with Leka, for example, because pawn would just fall through, the holes are a bit big for pawn. Um, so, in general, I would say these are the cons for the wig system, but among the three, a uh, wig system is for sure my favorite, I have seen the best growth, I have the biggest variety of options in pots uh, or I can make my own as well. Um, also I would say that um, I have seen that the plants growing much better in a wick system than in a submerged system, at least uh, the majority of them. Uh, and also very very important for me at the moment because I have started experimenting with some organic media as well. Um, if you want to use an organic medium uh, then the wig is probably the wig method is your best bet that you know it will uh, you will not have any issues. So I would say that in general, and this is a note that you should take, the smaller size, the medium that you use is, the wetter it gets. Or to put it differently, um, the larger the media, the less moisture it retains. Uh, for example, Lechuza Pond, the branded pond, is quite small, like one or two, two, two probably millimeters uh, big. I have made a video a while ago about uh, pawn, DIY pawn versus Lechuza pawn. Uh, I can put a link in the description. Uh, but what I have noticed from my own experience is that Hoyas, or at least mm, some of my Hoyas, do grow better in uh, my own DIY pawn compared to Lechuza pawn. And this is because these Hoyas tend to A, uh, root rot quite easily, or B, uh, like it a bit on the drier side. So I would say Lechuza branded pawn is the small size. So if you have plants that really like it wet, put this in them. If you're doing your own pawn, then this is for the majority of uh, plants. And if you want something that really uh, doesn't retain much moisture, this is Leka. So Leka is practically, uh, comes in different sizes as well, okay, it's aggregated clay that may come in small, medium, large, extra, extra large, like here for example, I'm not sure if I can find any, but on the, on the mix that I made I put some mini Leka, which if you, okay, let me just give you a comparison, so the normal Leka that you can find in the stores is usually around that big. The leka that I put in my mix is that big. I'm not sure even if it's visible. It's like one one twentieth or one thirtieth of the original size. But in general, the tankier it is, the mix you're using, uh, the less moisture it can hold. 
Um, now, last thing, I'm not gonna go through the self pottering pots this because this video <laughs> will be like three hours long. It's a huge discussion about uh, self watering pots. I can make another video if you guys want, just let me know in the comments. But uh, as a rule of thumb, I would say that clear pots or uh, clear reservoirs, like um, here, this one where I have my Caldata, um, are great, are my favorite, because you can actually see the roots. There's a huge downside with this algae, like, here you see I have just made this set up a week ago I think and I have already some algae uh, growing here I, I think this is it guys I'm not sure if I have anything else to add uh, I would be more than happy to uh, get your feedback and your personal experience about semi-hydro have you used it have you transferred some of your plants have you transferred all of your plants for me i would say that for my house plants um semi-hydro covers uh, more than 80 percent of my collection uh, regardless if it's hoyas alocasias monsteras or anything else uh, so that's it for today. I hope I was not too tiring and this video wasn't too long. I'm not sure. I, I will check on the edit, but Something tells me that is a bit longer than half an hour <clears throat> Anyway, it is what it is. So thank you all for watching if you did like what you saw Please like and subscribe. It will help a lot and I will see you next time Bye-bye